Hey guys, random project for you. Extension cords or appliance cords or light fixture cords. How to fix them, how to splice them. Um, a lot of people know how, but there's still a lot of people that don't know how. And it's pretty obvious by, I think this one was actually wrapped up with masking tape. And, it, uh, and I'm going to show you a couple different ways to do it. A um, couple ways not to do it. But give you a couple different options. What I think is the best, what works, and what will get you by. Uh, we'll start out with this right here. It's just a basic, well, it's a funky lamp, but just a basic two wire, what you would find on any lamp or even, I don't know, most home appliances are just two wire situations. And they'll strip back some insulation and you're just left with two wires. They'll take them, they'll set them together, they'll wrap them up, they'll take some masking tape, waiting for their house to burn down, they'll take a piece of masking tape. Maybe one for each side, and they'll kind of just smush it together. Beautiful. I've even seen this done in cars. You know, this is a, you know, maybe they'll put a piece together across the whole outside. There we go. Light will work, but that is a fire waiting to happen. You know, whoops, there we go. We've got two live wires. You know, actually this time we got lucked out when it's the side on the lamp. So the two live wires are in there and they're probably touching. Gonna make a big spark, gonna burn your whole house down. Bad idea. Now, let's take that off. The best thing, I mean, if anything, do that same thing and wrap it up with electrical tape. Masking tape is not, will not protect you. It's not, um, not rated. But if, let's say we have, you know, besides soldering and stuff like that, and I'll show that in a minute. Let's just say you're going to twist it. We'll take some new wire. Um, we'll strip back the insulation. I'm going to show you how to do this just because you can tell people to solder whatever. They're not going to do it. They're still going to twist. There is a technique to actually twist and make it last. And what we're going to do is we're going to separate the strands of wire into two groups. You know, so we got two. We haven't twisted it together or anything like that. Each side got two. We're going to lay them together. We're going to twist one set together on one side. We're going to twist one set together on the other side. Okay? And then we're going to take both sets and twist them together. And that will give you about three times stronger than just taking a set of wires and twisting them. So, we just separate them about half, separate it about half, twist together, twist together, take the whole set, twist it all the way together, and that's going to last better than just not doing it. Now, in the twist situation like this, what you'd want to do is take some electrical tape, Give yourself enough of a spot to go between them because we want to isolate them separately. I'm going to fold one set forward, one set back, um, and ideally they'd be staggered, but this will be better than nothing. I'm just giving you a basic scenario. We're going to fold the electrical tape over. We're going to make it touch itself so it sticks really good so it can't completely unravel. Electrical tape, especially cheap electrical tape, likes to unravel on itself. We'll just wrap that around. We're going to wrap it around a couple times. And then we'll take the, uh, if this is a cord that gets pulled on a lot, you can do the next step, which is uh, you can actually fold it over in half like this and just wrap in the middle. And then you create a joint right here that gets pulled on more than your, uh, your fixes. And that actually works pretty good. You can take that, you can fold that up, you can wrap the electrical tape around the whole scenario. And then you create a point that is a ton stronger. The next method called butt connectors and it's these things right here you can twist them on you throw, you, I'm way too long for these but I'm not going to grip them on. But you throw them on you insert one side you take your crimper you crimp it on you insert the other side crimp it on, it gives nice insulation, you wrap it with electrical tape. These actually hold up pretty good and these are stronger than twisting. Better than twisting, um, but they're still better than that. 
Now you see I got a whole bunch of stuff laid out here because better than that is actually uh, using stuff like heat shrink tubing. Um, and we're going to use several different sizes. And I know everybody doesn't have this, so you can do this without heat shrink tubing. You can actually do this with the electrical tape. But we'll take the three different sizes. And we've got to assemble it all before we even start. We'll put a big massive one over the whole scenario and each individual usually you have to strip it back pretty far and each individual leg gets its own and what we're going to do here is actually just solder so the twisting doesn't really matter that much on this scenario just because we're soldering it together and it's going to be a permanent fix it will not slide out will not go away and we can use a soldering gun or we can use a torch. The torch works nice because you got to use it anyway to uh, do the heat shrink tubing. And what we're going to do here is fold one that way, fold one that way. We'll slide the heat shrink tubing over one side, we'll slide it over the other side, we'll suck those down, and then we'll slide the main heat shrink tubing over the whole thing, and I'm doing this really fast, and it's still... There we go, that repair is not going anywhere. You cannot pull that apart and that'll be protected. I should have done the heat shrink tubing a little larger on there. But that's the idea. That's not going to go anywhere. The double heat shrink tubing should give you plenty of insulation. You can wrap that in electrical tape if you want, but I want it, you know, if anything, I'd just do a, actually a longer piece of heat shrink tubing. But that's how you do a permanent repair. There you go. That's the basic idea. You can also use uh, wire nets or over in the UK. They're called thimbles, but they're illegal over there. So don't use these over there. They've been illegal since the 50s or so. But theirs were made almost completely out of ceramic. The ones in the U.S. actually have a metal insert inside to help conduct the electricity. And it locks them pretty good. So if you're just twisting, you can use these. But I still say you, you actually have to, to wrap them up with electrical tape really good to keep them from moving. Not a big fan of these, but you can use them. Uh, thanks for watching. Don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe. And don't forget to, you know... Just a basic rule of thumb on extension cords and even cords like this. If it's within a, a foot or so of the end or the cord's super long, sometimes it's easier just to cut off the cord and just install one of these universal plug-in adapters. This one's actually even a universal plug-in adapter as well. But it makes life a lot easier and everything works out great. See you soon. Bye.